everyone. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker Training. It's already off the rails here at fmtrain.tv. It's an action-packed day. It's an important that we leave you all in a good spot because because um, next week is off. There's no live streams next week. So today is very, very, very exciting. So we have an open Q&A. Um, I'm here. Jacob Taylor's here. John Hogel is here. He is the, mm, I want to say, the chief developer behind the last set of releases for FM Starting Point, where I wave my hands around and then throw money at it. He's the guy who catches the money in the air and then builds what we need to build. And so uh, today we are going to release that. We also have the uh, uh, the calendar uh, the calendar demo lacking SQL. I don't want to say no SQL because that would imply that somehow there's this no SQL thing. It just doesn't, it's in FileMaker without any SQL is what we want to say. So we have that too. So we got a bunch of awesome business coming up. So once again, I'm going to hit this one more time as a reminder, the upcoming live stream for next week is uh, air. It's all air. It's nothing but air. Back market, there should be a Friday and there is no Friday. So if you want to uh, just count on next week being nothing, I will be a pause on air along with some other people. Uh, we will do some recordings and some event material along the way. We will find, figure out how we want to get that to you. It might be a live stream or it might be something else. We'll see what happens. So it was just going to be too hard for us to put the live stream on next week. However, you're going to want to check out the new starting point. And if you have suggestions or topics you want to see us talk about, or bugs you find a starting point. We got a bug. Someone sent me one, a bug last night or this morning on a different version, which was good. We didn't know about it. Um, send that email to support at rcconsulting.com. So I want to confirm. Uh, I need to call. I need to call roll here. So like the teacher at the front of the class. All right. So uh -uh. John Hogel, are you here? Present. Present. Margaret Carlton, are you here? Yes. That was very uninspiring. Calvin <laughs> Moseman, are you here? Not here. Oh. Absent. Uh, Jacob Taylor, you're here, correct? Yes? Yep. All right. He's burrito. He, uh, did you self burrito yourself? Kind of, partially. Partial burrito. Okay, that's good enough. It'll get you through the next hour. So, uh, up front, let's clean up. Could do the cleanup from the live stream from uh, the last three days, which was Nick. So we have an uh, uh, upgraded calendar sample. Margaret, did that get all taken care of? Do we have that calendar one that Calvin was supposed to give us by before? Yes, yeah. I did. I got it at the last possible second, but it exists. Okay, so do we have that. Can you post the linky, linky, linky on that? That would be really great. Yeah. So um, what we're doing here, let me see. FM starting point. If you go to the marketplace, it doesn't particularly matter, but we have this thing called the calendar kit. It's actually a paid product. And so what happened for those of you who missed the uh, event, Nick did three days where he took this thing apart and actually removed a little bit of SQL that was in here, replaced it with some FileMaker relationships, and he spent three days talking about it. Um, he swears those were productive three days. Day three of three I saw, but there were three days of that. So there's a sample file. So... And that sample file does not include the calendar kit. It's just, here's Nick's sample. If you want to copy or you want to somehow copy and move it to your own solution, you can, you're free to do that. Um, so just want to, but that's kind of what this is about. So it's fullcalendar.io. It's an open source calendar. And he, Nick did this thing where he got rid of the SQL element, which was great. So Margaret, do we have the samples for that? Are we posting them everywhere? Okay, there's the one there. I've got three, so that, so item number one is not the Bongo cat, right? So we're not doing the bongo cat. I'm just going to put the bongo cat down there. Um, if you randomly hear the cat, then you'll know it's a, it's official time to change. It's like your children's story. It's like when you hear the meow, turn the page. Like this is before the internet for those of us who were kids, grandchildren, things like that. And you'd it'd be a read-along story, and you'd be reading, and Hansel and Gretel went up the hill, and the internet broke. When you hear the ding, turn the page. Awesome. So uh, – Real quick, so FM starting point is now the 2020 version. We talked about it loosely yesterday. If I press the button, we go to the FM starting point website right here. Um, and if you can't see something, let me know, everyone. But what we've got is we've uh, we've had this 2020 design aesthetic. Nick originally built it, but it was so hideously conf uh, complex and confusing that no one at RCC actually wanted to touch it. We sprayed it down. We, we radiated it. We killed all the viruses on it. Um, and out came the FM starting point, what we call the light version. So if you go to versions, 
you'll see this idea right here where we have starting point light, starting point standard, this should say 22 on it, um, and starting point hand, so there's really three versions. The light one for 2022 has been out for a while. It's got the neomorphism design aesthetic. There's that Nick one that, that we have a link for randomly other places. I At some point, we'll mention that in here. Um, but that one is... Uh, the one that Nick uses for some of his demos. Standard is the, like the go-to one if you're a more established developer. It's a little bit more sophisticated. It, this is the version of the CRM that will scale. It will scale to very large size. Like uh, we had it under combat conditions with 261. I mean, live fire for Marines out there, there's a live fire exercise, um, a beach assault with live ammo. So that could be dangerous. So we put the troops ashore. We had 261 people beating the shit out of the server at once, all requesting um, reports at the same time, which you would never want to have all the all the people <laughs> asking for a detailed analytical report. That's when we were able to knock it over. We couldn't break it otherwise. It would probably have scaled to three or 400 people pretty easily. Um, so anyway, um, the light one's already here. John Hogle got this one for us. It's you, What you're going to download is a standard one. The enhanced one, is you can only buy it if you purchase our training bundle. I guess I should mention this real quick. We greatly appreciate the people who support our complete training bundle. This version right here, which has QuickBooks support in it, things like that. Uh, that one is only available if you purchase our complete training subscription right here. We do greatly appreciate it. I know everything here at RCC is basically free, but I do have to pay the bills and keep the lights on. As I've been reminded when I was shown the bill for all the internal, like the Nick bill for the month and, and the finance department went, what the hell is Nick doing? I said he cured cancer or something for FileMaker. So uh, he's not cheap. Uh, Jacob's not cheap. None of these people are free. They all want to be paid. So that's how that works. So if you purchase this, you're supporting the channel. We greatly appreciate it. You will get value from this. You will get value from this, and you'll know that you're keeping the lights on here, which is greatly appreciated. Uh, so that's the new starting point. Let me show you what happens. If you go to starting point uh, to the website, uh, FM starting point, you're going to hit the download button right here. You're going to fill this information in. We're going to send you the standard email. Within that standard email, when you get it, it will look loosely something like this. You get this email. And it'll say, are you confused about FileMaker? Right? And there's a video here, but you scroll down. And then we're going to try to clean this up a little bit, this email. But the short version is here's the standard version that's beta. Then this is the light version, which is, I think we're on X9, and we're going to release an X10 on it. We're going to actually simplify it some more. John Hogle, are you going to work on that simplification project for us a little bit? Make it even more stupid simple? Yes, sir. Uh, hoping to have that done today or early next week uh, available for public download. Okay, great. We will try to coordinate on that next week. So that is the strategy. So this one right here is just... It was actually, even as it was, was a little too complicated. Some of my new people were like, what the hell? So when I hire, that's one thing. We hire a lot of new junior staff, and we bring them on board. Then every once in a while, I'll have junior staff who quit because they're not rich and famous after, you know, 18 months of, of learning FileMaker. And, and to become a senior in a senior position, a highly paid professional in any career, anywhere, <clears throat> it takes more than 18 months of you uh, practicing. So um, at any rate, we lighten it down some more. So that'll be kind of an additional updated version. This one up here, this one up here, we switched the primary keys to being UUID, which means that out of the box, out of the box, out of the box, it works with 360 works MirSync. Shazam, baby. Jesse only requested that about four or five years ago. Took me that long to figure it out. So you're going to get an email from that. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and that will be the standard version. If I press the button right now, will it work? It's a bunch of flashing up here. It redirects you to our site. The current build is X3 in case any of you are wondering. Um, we will update the releases behind the scenes. You won't see the release numbers updated here. So, uh, whoops, I just did it twice. Okay, great. So this is USS 22 USS X3. So version 22 it's a U.S. version. We're not localized it for the other the other versions of English yet, um, but it's U.S. It's the standard version, which means it's got all the creamy goodness. Um, there is a U.S. E version. That's the one you would get if you were paid uh, and part of our subscription. I'm not going to really do a beta on that one so much uh, because they're largely the same, except for the QuickBooks and some other kind of important things. This is X3. If I double click it, fire it up. Important to understand, this works with the FileMaker platform. 
Again, it works with the FileMaker platform. Um, oh, it doesn't work with Claris Pro. There's some there's some issues with Claris's new platform where if you distribute a file and you want to give it to people, you te technically you can't do that. It doesn't allow you to share files between people, right? Like download sample files. So people are asking what I think about Claris Studio, and uh, my my thought process is is it it needs to be better before we really actively use it. So instead of me double clicking on this on my computer, as if if any of you are, are confused and we're if any of you are confused about why there are so many versions of FileMaker, you know, this, that, and the other thing, well, today is your lucky day. It's your chance to provide feedback to Clarice on uh, how, what your feelings are for that. And so uh, that's really good. So let me open this up. I'm going to put it in FileMaker Pro. And it should pop open. There it goes. Sharing's not on. And so you'll a lot of you will say, hey, I kind of recognize this, right? Kind of do a degree. So this is a new starting point. Okay. So this is a CRM that Carlos really should like help ship out because everyone needs it. In fact, even all the competitors, I can't he can hear stories about certain companies like uh um fleas fleas smacks. So if I say fleas smacks or Hawaiian, things like that. I hear stories about people using our CRMs from these companies, right? So it's great. So it's open source. It's free. It's fantastic. Um, the user interface is excellent. It's off the hook. And it's priced aggressively to meet any budget need, right? Priced aggressively to meet any budget need. So um, so we talked about the calendar freebie we just gave away. We're talking about the new starting point we, you can download right now, uh, which works on FileMaker Pro. If you try to put it on Claris Pro, it will strip out the privilege set. It'll try to apply it a different privilege. I, I don't even know what will happen with Claris Pro. Um, so that's that's not a good thing. So moving along, we have a survey. Margaret, can you give us the link from a survey? So I got a note, and it's a big survey. <laughs> this is going to be funny. I had a, a note from a survey. And once again, I need to remind all of you that I am like one of you. I am not a paid representative of Claris in any way. And so as a result, I have a little bit more latitude about what I do on live TV. Um, so David Knight sent me a note about a survey. So Margaret, do we have the link for the survey? Can you post that on? Yep, I am working on it. This survey is an interesting survey. The survey is your chance to provide feedback about what you know about the FileMaker slash Claris platforms and do they work for you, right? Or are they work for you? Or if there's something missing, what do you need to move forward? I know some of you have not even been paying attention to the live streams for the last six, seven, eight months when Claire started doing this two platform forky thing that they're doing, right? And so some of you are like, what forked platform? Okay. If that's you, just send us an email to support RC Consulting. We'll send you the, the live streams to go watch. That being said, um, this survey is really, really important. We want you to go and fill it out. I've already personally filled it out, and then I found out something else, and I'm like, can I revise my my survey uh, downward? But uh, no, I couldn't do that. So anyway, so uh, yeah, it's interesting if you go in there, and if you don't know anything about the Claris platform, some of you are not even aware that FileMaker Inc. changed their name. I ran into that with that user group about a month and a half ago, and and the people that were, a couple of the people running it were, and I'm not making fun of anyone, but they kept, they kept, they were officially calling the, the 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 subsidiary of, of Apple that makes the FileMaker platform, they kept calling them FileMaker Incorporated very deliberately. And I'm like, dude, you know, you know, they changed their name. They're like, eh, right? So um, I worry about people, how we're going <laughs> to move people forward who, who don't know that the name changed three years ago. So um, this is a survey. Okay. I don't know what's going to happen to the results. My guess is that that the people, the LA user group, David Knight, some other people are going to present, are going to travel by caravan, by camel <laughs> to, to Santa, to Sunnyvale, California, and present this material to Claris, upon which time they will be executed for treason. Uh, so that is what's going on with that. So we've got a survey from David Knight. We've got the new CRM, FileMaker Starting Point. Next week, we're off because of pause on air. So with that in mind, I mean, I just gave you folks a, a $100,000 CRM. I gave you a survey. We gave you the calendar kit. I, it's like a ton of free stuff. So I'm not, I don't feel bad that I'm going to be off for a week. Now, open Q&A if we have anyone. With this in mind, 
It's open Q&A. We will take any questions that you might have about the Claris platform. We've talked about that before. We do actually have it here. It is technically theoretical functional. I can pop it up. It will log in for me. I can slice myself down to like much less, Richard. Uh, let's see, here we are. We're in Claris Pro. Do, 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 do. You could take, this is interesting, but you know, let's try this. So if I take the copy of starting point and I drag it on here, just because I am interested to see what happened, it'll say, hey, would you like to convert the file format? It's a one-way conversion. It cannot be undone, but we can save an old copy for you, which is kind of cool. It's about a 20, 30 megabyte uh, empty CRM file. It's not entirely super lightweight. Oh, then it wants the credentials. So you have to know that FileMaker defaults to admin, no password. Because see, it does it, it on Pro, it just does that automatically, right? Admin, no password, sign in. That means that they took out the admin, no password. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what's in there. If it didn't just try to guess it, it means well, Claris Pro is not just trying to guess it. So they took that out too. It takes the full admin account. Uh, um, converts it to security, right? right? I've see? never seen that default before. Is yeah, that new? Off. It's off right here. Well, it's off. I know. It's read only. You can't turn it on? Well, I could. Oh, okay. Mm. And then turn it on, see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. You just convert it, it, pop it open again, see what happens. It auto opened, but it's probably, it said read only. It probably is you. Yeah. If I click in here and type, no, it took it. No, I probably auto entered as me is what happened because it's allowing me to edit it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm in here. Not as read only, but I'm in here as that. So, yeah, a lot of fun with that, right? The Claris ID stuff is kind of, I understand the issue with managing piracy and having better control of that, but it's going to have to get a lot better before people. Any word on concurrent licensing about Claris Pro? Um, I have not heard anything about concurrent licensing with Claris Pro. But they don't, I mean, listen, I, let's just, Claris had a certain level of communication, right? And then there was that pro, that semi fake product launch thing that they did. What I, I called it the stealth bomber product launch. It flew over your head and no one knew it was a product launch, literally. Um, in fact, I didn't know it was a product launch until the next day when Rick called, Rick called it a product launch. Mate, their communication, um, I think that they've been getting a lot of, very confused customers and unhappy customers. I don't know what happens with that. I mean, the FileMaker platform is still fantastic. They're trying to move forward on this Claris platform. Um, but yeah, it's uh, right now it needs a lot of help. And I maybe in January, it'll be awesome. They kept talking about a lot of fixes in January. Uh, Media Sandbox, is anyone, Mark, can you help me fr fleece up questions here, Margaret? Yeah, I wasn't, you were kind of, I wasn't sure if you wanted this one. Um, Media Sandbox has one from, does anyone know where at the Claris website to find the offering and cost of the latest full bundle? Yeah, it's real easy. Um, I went and had to buy it. So if you go to claris.com, claris.com, and you come over here. And so let's just pretend like we're going to buy a five pack of this, right? So you go to pricing. That's your first clue, pricing. We're going to scroll down here. Where am I going? On-premise server, single licenses. Where is that? At? I think it was further down. It's like at the. I'm, I'm already. It's not even there anymore. Yeah. Claris platform. Maybe studio. Oh, I, I used to, to buy phone studio. To find this. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna type this out because normally when I look for this, I just type it. Claris, Clarice, platform bundle, and then Google. Ha! Of course, Beeswax is running an ad on it. Perfect. Delivering Claris, I think it's this page here. So we're on the offers, bundles, business. Uh, if I come down here, uh, here we go. So it's just like, it's on this off, weird off, one off page over here. Problem solver circle, find a partner. Ah, right, here you go. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click this button right here. So we're on, Claris.com offers bundles business. Then you scroll way to the bottom, and you got three uh, very diverse people sitting here, uh, one with colored shoes, looking at a, a laptop. I'm going to hit that. There you go. Claris platform bundle. Um, or you can go to the store.claris.com forward slash platform. Okay. 12 months, five users, and for whatever reason, remember that the um, – so this this is basically 
your on-prem FileMaker equivalent offering. So if I come back over to the platform key differences, I'm going to bring this up real quick. Um, we talked about this at great, great length over and over and over again. Um, I have that price wrong. It's 1237 So what, it, what this is, the FileMaker platform on this side, it's a vertical column. On the middle right here, this is the, uh, the Claris platform. And if you want the on-prem version of server, so this is the what would have you from formerly the artist formerly known as FileMaker server is now known as Claris server, which only works on Linux. If you're going to do this kind of deal right here, it's twelve thirty-seven for a five pack. It's not even the price that bothers me. I don't give a shit about the price. It's just that when you get into Studio, people go, "Why? What? Why would I want to use this?" And Studio is kind of we we play with it, and it if we you most of you were there when we would build this so you got the freemium someday i've asked uh claris for guidance on the freemium and what they're going to do and it's all they what they they insist that they have a plan yet they have not articulated their plan to me so if if, if any of you here hear about the plan let me know about that i have not heard about the plan claris connect is someday when they get studio squared away, then they bolt connect in there. And that will that would be pretty great. So really the price is kind of incremental. It's not that big of a deal, but they've got to make studio, they got to make me want to use it and they have to fix, fix a single sign on with the Claris ID stuff. It has to be, um, you know, has to be useful for the rest of us, all the, the, the issues. So Eric from Menu Label Maker says, great work, I guess, on the FM starting point. Yes. When I promise something, we deliver it. Sometimes it's late, but we do deliver it. And if you have feedback or comments um, on it, send an email to support at rcconsulting.com because the RCRM is the, the, in the FileMaker community is the definitive standard. It is really awesome. It is really great. It's really beautiful. But a contributing factor to why it's the definitive standard, it is free, right, for the most part. So um, that always helps, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it's free. So if you go to the survey, for those of you wondering about the survey, I guess I could pop that open real quick. So you come over here and you can fill this out and understand very, very important terminology right in here. Um, they assume that you under – they assume – they when you take this survey – the running assumption is that you understand that uh, that uh, that there's two platforms and they have different names. Okay, there's the FileMaker platform, which really shouldn't contain the word Claris at all in it for clarity's sake. Then you have the Claris platform, Bubble IO unlimited users for twelve to one hundred nineteen dollars per month. Just saying. Um, yeah, Moyer was high on Bubble I.O. in terms of their interface. They thought it was an interface that Cl uh, Claris or Apple should buy out was useful. Um, the thing with Air, I was looking at Airtable the other day, and Airtable has some, like, scalability limitations that are, like, FileMaker circa 1999 scalability limitations, right? It's like de literally dealing with FileMaker from 1990 or uh, 1999, like, before the turn of the century. Because they're like, well, you can't have more than... What was it? A hundred thousand records, and then a lot of people go, "Oh, I would never have more than a hundred thousand records." Bullsh! If you think that you don't never going to have more than a hundred thousand records, then you probably you could run your company on Excel and Post-it notes. Okay, just saying, because a lot of businesses they say that, and before long they're at thirty thousand records, and anytime you're in the five-figure range, you're already in danger of going over, right? And then in the back of your mind, that causes stress because, oh, if I get to 100,000, I can't add anymore. And then it won't work anymore. And then I have to delete some people. And I don't want to delete anyone, right? On my company, we have about 30 staff. We, we do a lot of customer-facing stuff. We have 15 million records for various reasons between the data systems. Would never. Oh, at I, least. Yeah. At least. And that's not uncommon. Jacob Taylor, you do a lot of server stuff, FileMaker server stuff. How much, I mean, how often do you see a customer with a, a gigabyte database with over 100,000 records in it? That's, all, that's often, right? Oh, easy. Yeah, that's our standard sizing for servers. Um, it's what I would call, and it's not rare, really, but I'll just say it's, le it's less often among our customer base. If somebody has over a 10 gigabyte, FMP12, like that's their, to I, 
not one file necessarily, potentially multiple files, but we're talking data only, container data stored outside the files, all that stuff. We're just talking record data. Uh, only, I, I would only say over 10 gigs is uh, kind of rare. All right. Most this, businesses are in the one to nine. So here we are. This is the latest news that came out apparently like two days ago. So we're going to all read this together because I haven't seen this. Um, now you see it. Now you don't. In forms and list of details, you now can conditionally hide or show a field object on data and other fields. Oh, conditional POV, pro program ob pro programmatic object visibility is... I guess in here, we should play with that. Just click on the lightning bolt above the field object. When this happens, choose a field and condition a check. Oh, we should do this. Field trip, new users, uh, drop down. Da, 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 da. See, that's cool. They just have to fix the rest of the giant flaming problems that keep uh, keep the developers. I mean, the developer, the senior developer community is really aggravated. Let me see. Not a little bit pissed, they're real pissed. Hot off the press and Clara Studio resources now provide links to the latest Clara Studio notes, I guess. All right, so should we try this? These are all, but yeah, I, yeah, I still don't know if Clara has put the ability in here to delete stuff, right? So I, we keep creating sample tables and then um, I try to like clean it up and get rid of stuff. And then the old tables are still in here. I can't get rid of them. I get rid of the view, but the table is still here. It's like, uh-oh. Like when I want to clear it out before a demo. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to try a new one. Create a new view. What do we want? I, I need uh, Ruben. You're going to help me with this. Help me out with this. We're going to do a new form. We're going to do the, the, the frog rescue, Kermit the frog rescue. Okay. So this is your Ker uh, Kermit. I don't know how you spell Kermit. The frog, you guys love your frogs rescue. For those of you who are not watching Discord, they figured out they started just throwing up green frogs memes everywhere. And it, it means nothing to me, but they're all excited about it. Okay, so if this is your first name, um, and then here's another field. So if oh, this is cool, see, this is like delightfully surprising. This is wonderful. So if we could get this with all the other, the developers losing minds. All right, so create and manage. Hmm. Okay, when this happens, when the first name field equals contains, let's say contains Kermit, Kermit, then uh, show a field last name, save, done. Ha. Okay, you guys are gonna love this part. You wanna see if they fix the public access part of this thing, okay? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say share it. I'm gonna turn on the link sharing. Link sharing is enabled. Used to say something, oh, public sharing enabled. Okay, let me turn this off. Public sharing disabled. Okay, everyone sees this. This is what happened uh, 10 days ago when it blew up mm -hmm. on live TV. Okay, I'm gonna copy the link. I'm gonna say done. And let me post a link to Margaret. If I post a Discord, can you help me? Like there was a change notice associated yeah. with that. With uh, the public links. Oh, did they fix something? Uh huh. Yeah. You skipped it in your overview. Oh, did I? Oh, that public yep. links actually work now. Okay. Wait. 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 It does something different. You were thinking it didn't work, and it did. It didn't work the way that you thought it did. All right. The note, well, the note, the note that they put in there is that when you enable or disable public links, unlike before, you get the same public link each time. Previously, every time you enabled public links, you got a new link, which is why we kept running into issues. Now, no, if you were gone and we were we did this demo and you weren't even there, I don't think, and we couldn't get the public even when it said it and we got the fresh link, it would not would not do resolve. it. No. And so I just did this, but I didn't get. It showed up for me in Safari when I click. Oh, it works now. I wonder why it works now. Ruben says it's also working. So. Yeah, I tested it as well. I can. I submitted a form. Public link is working now, so they fixed that. But the did I just do the did I? F okay. Manage. Okay, here we go. When first name contains Kermit, then show a field last name. Okay, how come that didn't do anything? Let me add something else down here. 
add a, where's a static object? I like the word static object. Okay. Hermit sucks. Sucks. There we go. I'm just going to put a block of text in there to tell everyone what I think. Now, oh, it's got an M, Markdown supported. Oh, that's, that. you were telling me about Markdown, right, Jacob? You were yep. telling me about Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to manage. There's a lightning bolt here. Can I? Okay. Manage. Add, add. And when this happens, when last name, it contains, con, uh, let's just say is empty. I like that. Is empty. Uh, There's, you have two whens. One of them is empty. You then have a then. So you have a double condition. On the oh, are then. both of these driving this one right here? Is that what's going? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, I don't. If you want, want to edit the existing one? Go to manage. The first name is yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Manage. Uh oh. I okay. Back up. So if I go to create, then this would be a totally. Got it. Got it. Got it. So this is. You can do multiple conditionalities. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. But this, so let me see. Last name. If it's empty, then show is it a field or is it a uh, I, I think guess. because this is applied to that field last name uh, then you don't have to specify oh, so we're managing just the ones that are on only that field it's on not like the a last name, name field. It's not a page it's not a page wide deal got it okay nope. so i'm gonna all i've got is when the first name contains kermit then show a field last name okay which means that it shouldn't show the field unless it contains kermit which means that um and, and it's one of those things I click out. Is it? Did it save it? Like, did it save it? I'm clicking out. I'm like, oh, FileMaker techniques. Click out between the fields. It'll save it. All right. So, anyone? I refresh here. So their thing doesn't work right over here. So if I say Kermit, right. So, I mean, is it? If, it, if anyone tells me sees it working, let me know. Right. <sighs> Maybe we should reverse it to hide the field if it doesn't say Kermit. Well, then that tells me it, it kind of works, but it's mostly Brooke. Right, <laughs> right. Um, right. So if it's Kermit, yeah, because Kermit, well, last name would be the middle name is done, last name's Frog, right? So, um, but yeah, we could say. Uh, we need to select manage. What's that? Oh, Sorry. damn it. I'm screwing that up. Yeah. Okay, so how do I. Oh, it's either on, you can't chat it, so it's a throwaway. Got it. Toss, manage, create. Okay, there's no edit on that, by the way. Not the end of the world. First name, what do you want to say? Is empty, then it shows the last name? Is that what you want to say, show last name? If it's first name is empty, show. What was the other option in says show? That's an e that would be an easy test. Yeah, let's, let's say if it's empty, then hide field. I know, yeah. but you hear my finger going? Yeah, but so because this, uh, this you selected the last name, then the hiding is only applying to that last name. It's you select by selecting yeah, the last then name. Then it object. applies to the selected field. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. You can, do, you can do conditions that, it, no, no, it's, it's, you can do conditions that, that calculate on a different field, the first name field, the address field, the phone number field, but the action, because you have selected the last name field, takes place on the last name field right, right, only. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying, right. I keep thinking yeah. this is universal. You can, you can no, you can hit any universal. field on the right. layout, but yeah. you are only acting on, in this case, the last name field, yeah. This is years of doing FileMaker the other way, right? Yep. Where the system Expecting won. infinite in both directions. <laughs> yeah. Infinite, but I just have to fix that. Well, first name is empty. What do you guys want to do? Tell me what, Calvin, tell me what you want. Uh, hide, hide a field. Let's try that. Then hide last name. So if the yeah, first yeah. name field is, uh, then hide it. Save. save. Done. Yeah, that's an easy test. It's saved. Okay, now we're going to say, come over here. I'm going to say option reload. Oh, oh it worked. That one worked. Well, no, oh. hang on. There it is. Okay, that works. So that's then why, problem, agree. why doesn't it work? If it's... If the choose if the first name contains Kermit, I wonder if it's case sensitive. Then uh, I'm going to say hide the last name. Is that okay? That's what we tried before. Yep. Uh, except I already have one, so oh, it's got two of them. Hmm. Yep. That's interesting. I want to get rid of the first one, right? 
Okay. You can disable it if you want it to stay on there. There's a, got it. All right, I should have disabled. When first name contains Kermit, hide the last name. Done. Over here, click. Refresh. Okay, how about little Kermit? Tab. Now it works. So it must, we must have done it wrong, or this thing is a little squirrely. Nice. So I, I think I think the way that it's set up is that you could do a something like hide the last name if it's empty, um, or also hide it if it's Kermit. But then you could show it if. Um, there we go. Uh, so I think it's set up in a, in a multi predicate to to hide or show based on. Um, well, this broader is, terminology. I'll, I'll be honest with you. This is cool as long as, you know, this was cool in and of itself, kind of in a singular thing. Um, it's also cool that we had the they added the signature capability. That was a good one. I like that. I thought that was really awesome. So um, I think we still have the CAPTCHA issue where you're going to have porn submitted to your database. That's still an issue. I like this. This is a, this is, this adds a lot of capability. God, you know. If like I if I could just forward my life like forward us all forward into January or February I would do it because I think the next three or four months are going to be painful having people expecting a lot out of this platform and Claire saying go buy it go buy it go buy it when clearly it's not ready to be purchased yet um, at all zero um, yeah uh, but if you could get fast forward to past the point where there's some really gnarly blisters and ugly warts on on it um this could be that's that you know the signature thing i was pleasantly pleased when they added the signature it was a real to get it to display in filemaker those of you guys remember me learning the json right ruben you helped me with that right uh doing the json with the sample file right the whole display the image thing right so that was a good one what else was in that readme how else we get back that readme where they say claris connect claris claris help What's new? Okay, that was we just did that one, right? Yes. Field trip. New user. A new a new user field is a drop down field, but with a list of users in your team to choose from. For task assignment. Yeah. For, and for what will be task assignment? Symbol weather display. Okay, I'm assuming that's going to take localization off the computer, right? So it's uh, your, of course. I don't know. I haven't heard about that. Have they done their European servers yet? They're supposed to do a European server or something. I don't know. Because, anyway, going public. To get more control from reform. After you disable and ramble at the original links, you're working and rather than giving the link, like, this is going to talk about Yeah, that's a good, but that was not the bug we had. The bug we had is it just didn't work. All of you, a bunch of you were here saw that. Is the ID fields already in studio? Man, there there is a golden question. It's one of those giant gaping where they where they say uh, nature's way of saying that maybe you're done in combat is with that ch sucking chest wound that you have. Um, <laughs> at missing an ID field in FileMaker is like a sucking chest wound. It just is. Let me see. How do we? I'm going to add a field here. Short text, long text, number, drop down, check boxes, single choice, date, timestamp, phone. Current signature, which was great, right? Remember, we did the signature, and then when you bring in the file maker, you have to bust out some JSON and and uh, base sixty four conversion. I wonder if it container. That's a number with 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 formatting on it. What's that, Jacob? I wonder if it ever gets an ID. Well, if they don't, then. All they're, the not people, they're not necessary in Mongo. Like it'd be a doc. This would be a document collection under the hood. Um, well, let me. I, let me, let I don't me, know how that lives with FileMaker on the long term because we have let, to have keys. So, it, but anyone who's built relational databases for the last thirty years is going to kind of want to have one. I would build one just to not cause people, oh, the old people's head, to explode. Anyone who say older than thirty. If you're like less than 22 years old you're using FileMaker and you don't have a background in programming, then you're probably a valid customer who doesn't need a ID field. But I would do it just to just to help keep the old people happy. And I old people, I mean anyone older than 30. That's a pretty big range, Jacob Taylor. I think you're damn near in there, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So I just did a refresh user selection. Beverly Voth, Chris Moyer, Christian Schmidt, Lynn Allen. 
Now, they were all invited, but I don't know if they accepted their thingy. So, by the way, for those of you wondering how this works, this is so fun. There is a security system over in console.claris.com. This is historically the little console thing where you would manage your uh, Claris uh the Claris cloud server. I, 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 those are not official words, but otherwise you're confused. It's the server that Claris runs for you. The, the FileMaker server that Claris runs for you as part of the paid service, it's kind of pricey, right? So over here in that area, uh, you could manage your subscription, renew it. Remember, I bought a five pack. I told you about the five pack. We're managing my five pack. I invited users over here and it says no users are found, but that's a lie. So, and I always like it when you have deactivated people, they just get left in here like dead dead carcasses. Can I, yeah, see, there's no way of getting rid of that. So this dead, this dead animal is stinking up the living room. Okay, then there's Christian Schmidt here. Then there's Benden Counter, Gmail, I don't I'm not even sure who or what that is. Okay, um, uh, so Beverly accepted. Moyer accepted. Oh, I think this is, uh, what's her name? Alan. Okay. So she was supposed to, so she got, I think you get an invite over here. Then if you want these same people to actually use Claire Studio, then you have to come over here, invite them into another security system. So there's two separate security systems, totally separate, not even connected on the same website or nothing. <clears throat> right? And I think there's another one on connect too, I think. So I click over here. So this security list of people, is different than this list of security people. So you got to keep track of at least two lists um, and know that they're here, okay? So Richard's here, I'm a manager. Beverly's here, manager. Christian Schmidt's here as a manager. Moyer is pending. And Lynn Allen, so this is interesting. This is interesting. Is that Lynn Allen has not been accepted in here or over here, yet she still showed up on the list over here, right? So then when you submit this data, okay, so so I type this in, it looks really great, right? So what actual data is gonna be in here? I would love to know. Like, because remember there's a backend database, what's actually gonna go in there? Cause it just gave me a first name, a last name and an email. Okay, submit. Okay, data submitted. Come back over here. Hubs, it's not a hub. No, I think it's a view down here. Is it the new view? Here's the, the no, it's this one right here. Uh, and then it created a matching spreadsheet to go with it, which is kind of interesting. Holy shit, a bunch of you guys have been submitting data in here. Okay. Oh, I need to show, uh, no. How do I show? Total is 18 records. Columns. Top right, big blue icon. Column. Oh, there we go, user. Ah, okay. So it puts in the full name, but it's really probably... Yeah, it's weird, right? See, we're worried about, like, what data is actually in there. Like, if I export... Like, if I dump this into, like, a real database, like, you know, or tab or export it, what data would you really get right there, right? Is there a uh, actions table? Import, download as CSV. Okay. Okay, it is, I just selected, it just did it. Oh, here it is over here. I would say, what's the found set? What fields are involved? It just gave us all of it. There you go. That's the real data. Ah, man, I am good. So I, when, one thing I here. I sense the, that this disturbance in the force. I sense that something wasn't right, and I'm right. If you look at the user column, we have IDs instead of actual names. I know. That's why I'm over here, like, slam dunking uh, the football in the yeah. end zone. I knew something didn't pass the smell test, right? So there's a whole backstory at Claris. There's no documentation that I'm aware of with this. There's a whole backstory about those numbers, how they're generated. Like, if I delete – if I delete – Lynn, like, let's do this. Calvin, you ready to do this? Calvin, this is going to be a fun test. Okay, Calvin, you ready? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to remove this person, remove. I'm going to add 
Calvin, this is the I'm worried about, right? It's just like Mosey-men. You guys all know what's hey, about can, can you make the first name lowercase? Because Claris Connect messed up when my name was another up. another email I can use, Calvin? No, no, that, that's perfect. I just want it all lowercase because when, with Claris Connect, having an uppercase character messed everything up in the really? name. Wow. Now, you're a manager in your... Now, okay. By the way, you just slid up, so now you're number four, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, everyone, stand by. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to get rid of I'm going to keep mm, – I opened it twice. I'm going to keep one of them open. How do I go back to here? I'm going to go backwards. <laughs> go back. Test. RC. RC. Kermit sucks. User is – Calvin Moseyman. Now you would be the newest person. You would be number five. <laughs> you all saw what was going to happen here. Do we have bets? We want to take bets. Uh, drinking game. We want to take bets on this thing. What's going to happen? Uh, hello world. Submit. Okay. So of course, if you go over into the system, it says, oh, you've got uh you've got no it's this one right here edit there we go edit because you've got uh oh that's interesting because she's gone we removed her so it put five in there mm. so at the end of the day we have to know who these are this is mm, as long as you hired five or 10 or 20 people, 30 people, and you never fired anyone or they didn't quit <laughs> ever, <laughs> then this, that would be fine. But okay. So the bet is, is that Calvin's going to be six. If we export it. Okay. We're going to export one, two, three. Once again, there's no documentation I've seen on this. So I'm number eight. We can go look at Michael, the Michael record. Yeah. Look on the web. But I know we were messing around. I don't think here we are. Can you imagine a customer saying, Hey, I need help. And you go in there and they say, Hey, I got all these numbers and they were names of people. Now they're numbers. And what the hell am I supposed to do with this? I don't even know. There's a key like the teachers, like the te whatever your school used to have the teacher's edition of the textbook. Hey, I am the kid who went online, not online. There was no online time. I call around and I found the teacher's edition for the textbook. I'm that kind of kid. Right. I'm like, Oh, so there's, Where's the teacher's edition? But if you had the, these people been let go and new people were in here, you would get numbers that don't trans. You, there's no. So, yeah. So I know it's a good first start, but. Spicy Dookie wants to know that. Is there no primary keys? No, Dookie. There's no primary keys. Okay. You don't need a primary key. In fact, you don't, and when you put people's names down, you don't even know their names. You don't need to know their names. It's not important. Because <laughs> if you import the data right now into FileMaker, you're going to get numbers. Anyone want to take the bet on that? So we're going to go to Claris Pro. And I mean, yeah, I'm really glad that we have the FileMaker platform to play with while this one goes through its uh, birthing process or whatever. Create new. I wonder if it still does its new thing. So what it's going to do, it's going to import all the tables we've ever set up ever as uh, connections in here, right? So it's gonna import all these tables previously that we created. In fact, look, Beverly's been testing stuff in here. There's Beverly. People have been playing with it. Here's the new one we did today. Ah, there you go. So if you're in FileMaker and you're trying to integrate with this, you are, because this is gonna mean nothing with these numbers here. So the FileMaker platform is really awesome, okay? I wanna be very clear that this, this in the following, in the following event, wherever that went, this is the stuff that we know and love over here. This needs to be adjusted for the modern universe and the modern century, but that is working and it's not broke. This over here is super broke and it has some of the modernization. If you could take the awesomeness of this, the scalability of this, the use of the, 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 all the greatness about this, and then bolt on some things that don't break the out of it then you'd have a real winning product i think that's what we're going to get but i think we're going to have to have some therapy about this
I suspect this is going to get a lot better. I will simply tell you that. I want you all to know, and I'm going to speak from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to wrap it up with this. I really love the, the FileMaker community. I love it a lot. I think you folks are great. There's a lot of fantastically creative people there. I think you are wonderful. I want you to know that you folks do a great job in making the world better. You take FileMaker, this product, you make it better. And when someone kind of challenges your ability to do make the world better, it freaks us out a little bit. I understand that. Okay. I want you to know that you are wonderful people. You make a difference. I'm glad you're here. I will not be around next week, but we gave you free FM starting point, the new CRM. I would not have built the new starting point and put it out there if I thought Claris was going to pile into the ground, explode, and go away. They're not going anywhere. All right. Well, that's it for today. Michelle Gravel, I am seven. Cool. Awesome. Okay, Ruben, damn it. Okay, this is the I get all the time with these guys, right? <laughs> all right, see you folks. up here who uh, may be a FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.